Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list for us, a Labor Day gathering that has a dual purpose. Beyond a fun day by the lake, it's also a chance to share the history and meaning of the labor movement. The Knoxville Oak Ridge Central Labor Council hosting that gathering at Melton Hill Lake Pavilion. After lots of lean times with declining membership and influence, unions here and across the country are now seeing a resurgence. You may remember in April when workers at the Volkswagen plant in Chattanooga voted to join the UAW. Shane Smith with the Knoxville Oak Ridge Central Labor Council believes the role of unions can be misunderstood. Unions are vital to the economy of this country, especially for the middle class and the workers in this country. We're a balance of power against corporate greed. We get workers' contracts and uh, that are enforceable, legal, legally binding, and uh, we're proud to do it. Now, we're told the Knoxville Oak Ridge Labor Council works with more than 30 unions in 15 counties that surround the Knoxville area. Next up on the 7 for you, court documents today giving us new answers about a weekend attack. According to an arrest report, police found the victim lying in bed with a pickaxe embedded in his skull. That report also mentions a witness account claiming they saw Hanson Hernandez Moran hitting the victim multiple times with the farming tool. Now, Hernandez Moran is charged with second degree attempted murder. We showed you some of these pictures of the large police presence as KPD cruisers lined up outside the home where it happened in the 1000 block of Morrell Road. According to the report, Hernandez Moran ran off but later turned himself in to police at the scene. The victim was transported to UT Medical Center with life-threatening injuries. New information at 7 now on a fire at a North Knoxville office park. Just in the last 90 minutes, Knoxville firefighters sharing these pictures from inside a business that caught fire on Taswell Pike in the Fountain City neighborhood. Fire crews also sharing more about what happened. KFD says the 911 call came in about 10 minutes before, this after, uh, before 4 this afternoon with a report of a building possibly on fire near the Casey's gas station. Fire crews found smoke coming from the back of the shopping center in the 2900 block. Now, they managed to trace the smoke to a fire burning in the hallway of the Retreat Massage and Skin Care Center. The business has moderate fire, smoke, and water damage. We're told businesses in that same building received smoke damage as well. No injuries were reported, and the business was closed at the time. Of course, we'll keep up with the investigation and let you know when we learn more. Another fire on our Big 7 and 7 list in East Knoxville. Two adults, two children, avoided injuries after escaping a house fire. Knoxville Fire says it received a call about a fire in the 4,000 block of Catalpa Avenue just before 9 this morning. KFD says it was able to quickly enter the building and put out a fire inside a bedroom within minutes of arriving. The house, as you can see in some of these pictures, suffered from significant smoke, water, fire damage. We're told the two adults and two children who were able to escape are being assisted by the Red Cross. A citywide celebration is next for you on the 7 tonight. The city of Harriman, this Labor Day, hosting its 36th annual Hooray for Harriman Street Festival. The festival centered around celebrating local merchants and brick and mortar stores downtown, honoring the work they do to support Harriman's growth. And today, two brothers, Blake and Travis Kirkland, were given the keys to the city. You know, many credit them for lifting the city out of a depression after buying buildings downtown and creating restaurants and stores, boosting the area's local economy. When they told me what they was doing, I thought there's no way this is going to happen, uh, but they did. And because of what they did, the passion, the love that they put back into the downtown and their businesses, it grew our downtown. Now you can't find a building that's empty. Uh, if you do, it's under construction and people are getting ready to move into it. So they started that vision. You know, since the brothers bought their buildings in 2016, the city's mayor says the city has been growing ever since. Kirkland brothers were born and raised in the city of Harriman and told us that they were honored to receive the keys to the city. Also making our list tonight, the end of a manhunt. The suspect in a stabbing and shooting investigation has now been captured in Claiborne County after being on the run for several days. THP sharing this picture you see behind me here of the arrest after troopers helped sheriff's deputies track down Jeanna Miracle. Now the picture shows Miracle had cut her hair and changed her appearance. That arrest happening at a home off Highway 63 in Claiborne County. As we reported, the Claiborne County Sheriff's Office was searching for her in connection to an assault involving the stabbing and shooting of a female victim at a home in Harrogate. She was later added to the TBI's most wanted list for attempted first-degree murder. She was transported and booked into the Claiborne County Jail. 
Our Big 7 list wraps up with plans to remember a first responder. Over the weekend, showed you this procession in Jefferson City for Jeremy Sutton, a paramedic for Jefferson County EMS and assistant chief of the Jefferson County Rescue Squad. He was killed Saturday night when an ambulance was hit by a tractor trailer, the I-40, I-81 interchange. According to Tennessee Highway Patrol, the ambulance pulled in front of the tractor trailer while attempting to access the I-40 eastbound lanes at a small crossover. Now, we've just learned that Sutton's body will lie in repost Saturday from noon to 2 at Lakeway Performing Arts Center on the campus of Lakeway Christian Academy in White Pine. Family will receive friends from 2 to 4 and 5 to 7 that afternoon. Funeral services for Sutton will follow Sunday morning at 11, also at the Performing Arts Center. In lieu of flowers, the family is asking for donations to, to the Jefferson County Volunteer Rescue Squad, or you can donate to a fund for Sutton's children at TVA Employees Credit Union.